Welcome to 5th grade math with Mr. J. And in this video, we are going to be covering subtracting decimals. Now, if you have the basics to subtraction down, like you know how to borrow and go through the process, subtracting decimals really isn't too bad. There's just a couple extra rules we need to keep in mind. Kind of like when we did adding decimals. It was very similar to just adding whole numbers. We just had a couple extra things to remember. So this is the instructional video for subtracting decimals where we will do the four problems on your screen together and then we'll follow this up with the mastery check where you will do six on your own to see if you have it down. So let's hop into number one here and go through the process of subtracting decimals. I highly suggest uh, writing these out with me, going along with me. Um, I think that will be more beneficial to you than just sitting there watching me. But either way, it's up to you. So our first thing we do when we subtract decimals is we line our decimals up like this. Once we have our decimals lined up, we see if we need any placeholder zeros. And in this problem, we don't. So you'll see what I mean if you don't when I uh, mention the words placeholder zeros in the following problems. But number one, we don't need any placeholder zeros. So line up our decimals, see if we need any placeholder zeros, and then all we need to do now is subtract. So five minus two is three, seven minus six is one, and when we subtract decimals, just like adding decimals, we bring our decimals straight down, and then nine minus three is six. So our answer is 6 and 13 hundredths. Now, we always check to see if our answer is reasonable or it makes sense. So we're going to use estimation to do that, estimation and rounding. So I go back to my original problem, and 9 and 75 hundredths is closest whole number is 10. I round it to 10. Minus 3 and 62 hundredths, closest whole number would be 4. 10 minus 4 is 6. That is my, est my estimate. And let's see if my answer is reasonable. Is it close to my estimate? Yes, they're very close. So I have a reasonable answer. Number two, what was the first thing we do when we set up our subtracting decimals problem? Hopefully you thought to yourself, line up the decimals. So let's line up our decimals put our subtraction sign in there. Now in number two, we do not need any uh, placeholder zeros either. But this one's a little different than number one because we cannot do three minus nine, so we need to borrow in this one. So we take from the two and we get to 13 minus nine, which is four. Bring our decimal straight down. Cannot do one minus eight. Don't put seven there. One minus eight is not seven. We need to borrow. So we get to 11 minus eight which is three, and then we just have a zero, zero over there. So three and four tenths. Let's round and use estimation to see if our answer makes sense here. So this would be round to 12, and eight and nine tenths would round to nine. 12 minus nine is three, so our estimation is three. Our answer makes sense. We have a reasonable answer. Number three, first step, line up our decimals, put our subtraction sign, our equal sign. Now this one is a, is a problem where we will use a placeholder zero, okay? See how we're a little offset here and the bottom number has a six in the uh, hundredths and our top number doesn't have anything in, the hun anything in the hundredths? I'll show you the number one mistake when it comes to subtracting decimals and why we need to make sure we put our placeholder zeros. You cannot just drop this six, okay? There is a placeholder zero we put up here and we know zero minus six is not six, so this is incorrect. Don't just drop that six. I'm going to reline up up here in the top right. I put my placeholder zero. Zero minus six is not six. I need to borrow. 
I get a 10 here. 10 minus 6 is 4. 7 minus 7, 0. Dot, dot, dot. Bring that decimal straight down. 7 minus 3 is 4. And 2 minus 1 is 1. And I get 14 and 4 hundredths. Let's see if that is a reasonable answer. We have 27 and 8 tenths, which would round to 28, minus 14, which gives us an estimate of 14. Is our answer close to 14? Yes, so we have a good answer there, a reasonable answer. Now this helps, helps us. Maybe you accidentally write your problem down in a sloppy manner and you have the decimal right there in your answer. And you go back, do your rounding and estimation, and you see that your answer should be close to 14, but you got 1 and 404 thousandths. That's why you use estimation and you check to see if your answer is reasonable because we got something that does not make sense for something around 28 minus 14. Okay, so check to see if your answer makes sense. And then number four here, this is a good one. This is my favorite because we run into one of the biggest qu questions I get the most here. So our first step is to line up our decimals and we have a 15. Well, 15 holes does not have a decimal. Well, actually every number has a decimal. We just don't put them for whole numbers because it's not necessary. Think of $15. The decimal would come right after, right? Same thing for a whole number. Put the decimal right after the 15. Now, we're nice and lined up. It looks a little offset. It might look a little um, weird to you. And that's why we put our placeholder zeros here. You can't just drop the 32 down. So, this one requires a lot of borrowing. We can't do zero minus two. Can't borrow from a zero. So we have to borrow from the five over here. This turns to a 10. Well, we got to borrow one from that. So we get to 10 minus 2, which is 8. 9 minus 3 is 6. Dot, dot, dot. Bring that decimal straight down. Cannot do 4 minus 5. So we need to borrow again. And we get to 14 minus 5, which is 9. And we have 9 and 68 hundredths. Let's do some estimation here to see if this is realistic. So 15 is a whole number, so the closest number obviously 15 and 5 and 32 hundredths rounds to 5 so we get to 15 minus 5 which is 10 and is our answer close to our estimate 9 and 68 hundredths yes we have a reasonable answer so that is subtracting decimals for you and some example problems just remember line up your decimal use placeholder zeros if necessary and correctly borrow and go through your subtraction process and you got it down. So I will see you over at the mastery check to see if you have it down on your own. Oh, and by the way, I dropped the link to the mastery check in the description. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and let me know if there's any material you'd like me to cover in the comments. Until next time, peace.